and um, hosting the World Cup comes with some sort of um, prominence and also an honor to the nation that hosts. And uh, you are welcoming over 2 million visitors from over 160 countries into your abode. And so a lot of countries uh, bid uh, in a bid to have this honor upon their countries. And so Ghana, uh, intending to host, has generated a lot of social media uh, discussions. And even in the traditional media, there are so many people with doubts as to Ghana having the capacity and even the financial wherewithal to do this. But what exactly does it take to host the FIFA World Cup, which has become the biggest football fiesta in the world? From the onset, um, any country that uh, hosts the World Cup must meet a very strict uh, infrastructure requirement. And this comes with a lot of financial investment amongst many other standards set by FIFA the international governing body for football. Uh, these minimum requirements include criteria for stadium, hotels, transit, and I mean probably communications and electrical grids. In fact, 70% of the bidding process comes down to already existing infrastructure in the country. That's where the difficulty comes in for Ghana. 70% of the requirements comes in when the country already has infrastructure available. And if you don't have 70% of them available, then you are already priced out or you are already disqualified from hosting the uh, global fiesta. And having the infrastructure in place also, uh, you must demonstrate plans and commitment to ensure that that criteria remain in the 30% will be met. So it takes quite a chunk of a country's national budget to be able to meet this. So going back, let's revisit South Africa 2010, and that's a country that spent approximately $4 billion in hosting the 2010 World Cup. That's only for preparation ahead of the World Cup, and not what the country spent during the one-month period of the World Cup. So South Africa, in preparing for the World Cup, spent approximately $4 billion, and that's more than what Ghana even achieves from the revenue generated in this country. After South Africa, you can also take cue from what Brazil did, and Brazilians spent 15. You can also take cue from what the Brazilian government did in hosting the World Cup. In Brazil, they spent around $15 billion to stage the World Cup. And these are preparatory uh, financing, not the actual money that's spent in the World Cup period. So in the preparation ahead of the World Cup, Brazil spent over $15 billion in, in putting up infrastructure and other sort of facilities for the World Cup. So the difference here is that Russia spent $14 billion preparing for the World Cup, and that was in 2018. But Brazil spent $15 billion in 2014. And you can make the inference that Russia had already existing facilities that met the FIFA criteria and standards. So they didn't have to put in much more infrastructure. And this is where you can situate the situation of Ghana. If you don't have existing infrastructure that meets FIFA's criteria, it will be very difficult and daunting on the government to host the World Cup. Let's assume that in Ghana, we do not have existing infrastructure in terms of stadium. So you must have between 40,000 capacity stadium and 80,000 capacity stadium. And that's dependent on the matches that will be played at, the, at those particular venues. And additionally, each team needs to have its own camping base and training site. So in 2018, we had only 32 teams featuring in the World Cup. In 2022, there were 32 teams. But by the time that Ghana envisages to host the World Cup in 2038, the teams might have increased according to what the FIFA expansion process is, 48. And so Ghana will need to establish around 84 training bases or 88 training bases for all the teams that will be playing. That's two per team at all the stadiums. So the training bases for the teams and also have training bases behind the stadium. And that's around 80 to 90 training bases for all the teams that will be competing in the World Cup. And this is a minimum requirement. So behind the stadium and then at the training site or camping site of the uh, participating teams, you must have a standard a requirement that the teams will train there. And this comes to around 90 training sites. And that is in, 
that includes also having 12, a minimum of 12 standard stadia in each city in the country. Let's take this for instance. In the 2026 World Cup that will be hosted by the United States of America, Mexico, and then Canada, there will be around 14 stadiums and 150 training grounds. And that's, that's the scale of it. In 2026, FIFA requires that there will be 14 stadiums and then 150 standard training pitches for all the teams that will be participating. So if you are in Ghana and you are looking to host the World Cup, these are the minimum requirements in terms of stadium and training infrastructure facilities that you must have. And the stadium construction and renovation is one of the biggest costs in hosting the FIFA World Cup. In most countries, existing stadiums are placed in major cities, but FIFA prefers that the stadiums be spread throughout the country. So for instance, in Ghana, you have your stadium in Kumase, in Accra, in Takrade, and in Tamale, or in Cape Coast. These are the major cities. But according to FIFA, cities like Bolgatanga, Sunyane, Koforidia must all have their stadium to be able to spread the tournament across. So you are talking about 14 stadia. You already have four, which are not up to standard. So all of them needs to be demolished and to restart construction of 14, a minimum of 14 or 15 stadia. And we have 16 regions, so per the FIFA requirement, each of these regions must have their own international stadium so that the tournament is evenly spread and then there is not too much congestion in one city. So even for the construction of the stadium alone, we've already looked at the costs, total cost of preparation, but even at the construction alone, you look around and Brazil spent around 3.5 billion on construction of stadium and training facilities. Russia spent around 3.8 billion on the construction of stadium and training facilities. South Africa spent around $1.3 billion on the construction of stadium and training facilities. So you could clearly see a chunk of the financial or budget for the hosting of the World Cup eats or is eaten basically by the construction of the stadium and training facilities. And secondly, transportation. And this is where the difficulty will be for countries like Ghana that have the vision of hosting the World Cup. So FIFA requires that each stadium has an airport nearby. You are going to construct 15 international standard stadiums. And each of these stadiums in all the regions must have an international airport nearby. And each airport must have a minimum capacity of 1,450 visitors per hour. And at this point, only Kotoka International Airport is fit and standard for that. We do not have any airport in this country that can meet the requirement of 1,500 visitors per hour. Because you are talking about teams like Brazil, Nigeria, teams like United States that are coming with a whole loads of supporters plus their training teams and crew, uh, I mean journalists and people that will be attending. So if you have four teams that will be placed in, for instance, Sunyane, the Sunyane airport should be an international airport and having the capacity of welcoming 1,500 visitors per hour. And so we will need to reconstruct an entirely new airport. That's 14 or 15 of them across the cities where the matches will be hosted. This is a difficulty and a daunting task for a Ghanaian economy like ours. And this has got to do with airports alone. FIFA requires also that countries will be able to accommodate the temporary surge of cities nationwide, including terminal, passport control, immigration. So you need to construct the airport and input all this. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the transportation because apart from the airports, you would also need to have in place a rail line that will shuttle teams from Accra to Kumase in the absence of airports where supporters will want to be uh, traveling by rail. There should be an accessible rail line in place to move them in and out from Kumasi to Accra. And I'm talking about speed trains and comfortable ones. There should always also be shuttles and areas for taxis that can communicate, uh, that can transport people easily between one de destination to the other host city. So rail lines, airports, plus a very smooth transportation system and the roads FIFA requires that the roads must be dual carriage, not for any, I mean, impending accidents and other 
um, unforeseen circumstances. So you need to put in place an entirely new road. You need to construct roads between Sunyani and Accra, roads between Kumase and Takrade, roads between Takrade and Cape Coast, roads between Cape Coast and Sunyani, roads between Sunyani and Bolgatanga. So it's, it's a whole new dimension that throws into the hosting of the World Cup. So beyond the stadium, you come to roads, you come to airports, you come to rail lines, and a whole lot of transportation system that must be available, including big taxi stations, and no, I'm not talking about um, fidgety taxis, taxis that can um, and transport people, tourists of that caliber, and of course, of that repute. And in terms of transportation, South Africa invested 2.6 billion in upgrading their transit infrastructure for the 2010 World Cup, 2.6 billion. Add that to 1.5 billion for the stadium, and you already know how much you are investing out of your GDP as a country. Then we move to the next one, accommodation. Another difficult and daunting task for countries in Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, and especially for Ghana, accommodation. FIFA requires that. You have 72 base camps, and that is for when the World Cup was 32 teams. And when the World Cup is in, uh, expanding to 48 teams, you need around 100 camp hotels for each team and their referees. You need around 100 base camp hotels for each team and their referees, as well as four hotels per stadium location. So 48 teams, each of them will have their own hotel and camp base. So that's around 100 camp base and hotels. And then beyond that, each stadium, like the Accra Sports Stadium, should have standard hotels, four-star and five-star hotels, four of them minimum around the stadium to be able to accommodate FIFA officials and other top dignitaries like president and head of state who may be attending the World Cup. So four stadia around, four hotels around the stadium, and then you go beyond that to 100 and over training camp hotels for all, to accommodate all the teams and the referees. How can Ghana, in 15 years, be able to construct around 120 hotels. That's the minimum. It's impossible to construct 130 or 140 hotels, four-star, five-star hotels, just to accommodate the World Cup or just to host the World Cup. And it was a difficulty for Brazil in trying to host the World Cup, one of the areas where they struggled. And you know what the Brazilian did? In Brazil, they were unable to meet the demand for the hotel rooms. So they brought in six cruise ships and provided an additional 10,000 rooms. They brought ships and put them on the sea. And so the fans who could not get hotel access slept or got accommodated in cruise ships and it provided 10,000 accommodations because the ships were available and then you have to buy some and add to be able to host. How will Ghana be able to get cruise ships over 10 of them in case that we are not able to complete our, our hotels? to accommodate over 15 or 20,000 fans who will be attending the World Cup. And by doing so, uh, the port, your port must be re revamped. So in the case of Brazil, even when they got 10 cruise ships to accommodate fans, they had to revamp their port to be able to have the, the, the cruise ships closer to the fans. So they spent around $7 billion on the project of revamping the port. This is a very huge cost. Uh, that countries like Ghana will find it difficult to do. And that's at the cost of 45 billion. In Qatar, at the cost of 45 billion, they built an entire city. For Qatar, in order not to struggle with accommodation, they built an entire city at the cost of 45 billion. And Qatar built this from the scratch, and also bus terminals and all that for the fans. So Russia, even with their, I mean, the magnitude of a country that they are, were instructed to add additional facilities in terms of hotels and transportation to be able to meet the requirements of hosting the World Cup. And one of the biggest challenges in hosting the FIFA World Cup is making these new facilities usable after the tournament. Because, for example, Russia turned the training site into an after-school where centers where children who have closed from schools will go and play to be able to generate money, sustainability process in place. For instance, uh, the Takrade Stadium after the Cannes 2008 has become a white elephant and rotting to the core. These are some of the challenges. So, will it be financially prudent for Ghana to spend around 300 or 200 billion dollars, which is much more than your country's GDP? 
to host the World Cup. And after the World Cup, some of this stadium, some of this construction site, some of these training facilities, and most of them will become unusable. And then country will not be able to maintain. Because even for four stadia, uh, we've not been able to maintain how much more 15 or 16 new stadia airports and all that in the city. So um, there are so many countries that will be bidding towards the World Cup. Morocco have tried since 2000 or 1992 to host the World Cup. They've not been successful. Even for all they have, a lot of the FIFA ins I mean, inspection team have criticized Morocco's infrastructure, despite what um, others I mean, see as a country that is a beacon of um, industrialization, a country that is a first class on the continent. FIFA inspection team have consistently criticized the Moroccan uh, bidding capacity to host the World Cup. So for Ghana and a country that spends around 95% of our annual revenue generation in payment of um, employee salaries and servicing of debts. It's not financially prudent to host the World Cup. So for those who didn't know, these are basically some of the I mean, little requirements that FIFA will put in place for countries who have the vision of hosting the World Cup. And in 2026, North America will be hosting the World Cup, that's Mexico, Canada. Uh, in each of the countries, there will be 10 games, and then the United States will be hosting the other 60, including all the matches from the quarterfinal onwards. And the good thing about the U.S. hosting the World Cup is that they will not be struggling and difficulties because they already have uh, over 70% of the infrastructure in place. We conclude that Ghana is in the same state as Qatar, who didn't have enough of the facility, existing facilities to host the World Cup. And they ended up spending over $222 billion to host the World Cup, the highest ever by any country. How much will Ghana spend having no roads, no airports, no stadia, no hospitals, no hotels, no training facilities? I'm sure we are going to build an entirely new country to host the World Cup. And that requires that each of us in this country will contribute whatever they have, including their houses, to be able to put together to host the World Cup. And if that's feasible, on a good note, if that's not, Ghana will have to think about something else and not hosting the World Cup. Thank you.